Ah, the year was 1958, a time when the flicker of the silver screen held an enchantment unlike any other. Amidst the sepia-toned memories of the past, one film shone like a gem, bell book, and candle. Perhaps you remember the moment you stumbled upon it a lazy afternoon, the sun filtering through the curtains as you embarked on a journey of magic, romance, and that nostalgic touch of classic cinema. A movie whisked you away to a world where witches weren't just mythical beings, but stylish, captivating characters living in the heart of Manhattan. And there, Gillian Holroyd's spellbinding charm and undeniable allure pulled you into her realm as she navigated the delicate balance between love and supernatural secrets. Oh, the moments that linger even now the playful feline puecket, the clandestine rituals by the light of a bewitched candle, and the chemistry that sizzled between Gillian and the dashing Shepard Henderson. Every scene seemed to have a touch of magic woven into its very fabric, making it a captivating experience that lingers in your thoughts even after all these years. But enough with reminiscing, let's pull back the curtain and unveil some fascinating tidbits about the movie that might have eluded you. Did you know that the film's title refers to a witch's manual, a reference that adds an extra layer of mystique to the story? And behind the scenes, Kim Novick's costumes were meticulously designed to evolve with her character's emotional journey, a subtle yet brilliant touch by the costume department. So, dear cinephile, as we dive into these enchanting nuggets of trivia, may they rekindle the magic you first felt when encountering Bell Book and Candle. It's time to rediscover the nuances, the hidden details, and the sheer artistry that went into crafting this timeless piece of cinema. Bell, Book, and Candle, this enchanting film, directed by Richard Quine, offers a unique blend of romantic comedy and fantasy. Adapted from the play of the same name, the story follows Gillian Holroyd, a modern-day witch living in New York City's Greenwich Village, portrayed by Kim Novick. Her life takes an unexpected turn when she falls in love with her neighbor, Shepard Henderson, played by James Stewart, a charming publisher who becomes the target of her magical affections. The film's stylish portrayal of witchcraft, along with its witty dialogue and charismatic performances, creates a mesmerizing atmosphere. The characters' conflicts between supernatural abilities and human emotions add depth to the narrative, and the film's impact is evident in its influence on later pop culture representations of witches and romance. Bell, Book, and Candle remains a delightful exploration of love, magic, and identity, leaving an enduring mark on cinema history. Lavender Blonde, unveiling the enigmatic allure of Kim Novick's hair in Bell Book and candle in the glitzy realm of Hollywood's golden era, where every detail was meticulously curated. The 1958 film Bell Book and Candle cast a spell of intrigue, not solely through its bewitching narrative, but also through the enigmatic appearance of its lead, Kim Novick. Renowned for her captivating beauty, Novick flaunted a hair color that defied convention, a touch of lavender infused into her blonde locks, a shade aptly dubbed Lavender Blonde. The visionary behind this unconventional choice was the film's hair colorist, Helen Turpin. In a bid to set Novick's character apart from the blonde bombshells of the time, Turpin devised the mesmerizing lavender blonde hue. Novick's portrayal of Gillian Holroyd, a beguiling witch with a penchant for the unexpected, was elevated by this distinct yet subtle hair color, adding an extra layer of mystique to the character. This audacious hair color choice not only aligned seamlessly with the film's supernatural theme, but also foreshadowed Novick's role in challenging societal norms. In an era where conformity was the norm, both on and off screen, Bell Book and Candle dared to embrace the unconventional, and Novick's lavender blonde tresses became a symbol of that rebellion. Beyond the enchanting tresses, the movie's production journey was no less spellbinding. Originally under the aegis of David O. Selznick, the project was earmarked for his wife, Jennifer Jones. However, as the rights transitioned to Columbia Pictures, a constellation of stars was considered for the lead roles. Rex Harrison and Susan Hayward were slated to grace the screen, weaving an alternate tale of magic and allure. As the cameras rolled, the backdrop of the film danced with New York's iconic streets, a testament to the grandeur of the MGM backlot. While MGM's famed Brownstone Street formed the cornerstone, Bell Book and Candle also offered glimpses of Fifth Avenue and East Side Street, immortalizing these cinematic vistas in the minds of moviegoers. Notably, East Side Street had previously been the setting for Gene Kelly's iconic Singin' in the Rain, showcasing the timeless evolution of movie magic. 
the 1958 film Bell Book and Candle wove together elements that transcended the ordinary, from Novak's lavender blonde hair that dared to be different, to the intricate tapestry of the Hollywood dream factory that brought this bewitching narrative to life. As the reels of history continue to turn, the cinematic gem maintains its allure, an embodiment of an era when both on and off screen, the unconventional was celebrated. In the 1958 film Bell, Book, and Candle, a fascinating piece of movie history unfolds as the charming narrative is interwoven with intriguing behind-the-scenes tidbits. One standout detail centers on the film setting the exterior street where Kim Novick's enchanting shop and James Stewart's apartment came to life. This meticulously crafted street was none other than the western end of Brownstone Street, nestled within MGM's renowned Lot 2. A versatile backdrop, this locale graced the frames of numerous films and television productions, even making appearances in iconic episodes of The Twilight Zone during that era. Venturing just around the corner from Brownstone's eastern end, one would stumble upon the Zodiac Club's exterior. This glamorous hotspot was strategically situated near a three-way alley that split the bustling block. The aura of mystique from the film is further amplified by this carefully selected setting drawing audiences into the world of sorcery and romance. Adding a touch of whimsy to the mix, the film featured a captivating feline character named Puaket. A curious twist emerges when we learn that Puaket was not just a fictional feline, it was, in fact, Kim Novick's real-life pet cat, sharing the same enchanting moniker. This personal connection adds an unexpected layer of authenticity to the mystical tale, blurring the line between fantasy and reality. As the cameras rolled, another noteworthy event unfolded behind the scenes. The esteemed actor James Stewart, a cinematic luminary, celebrated his 50th birthday amidst the filming of Bell, Book, and Candle. This cinematic gem served as a unique backdrop for Stewart's personal milestone, infusing an air of celebration into the production. Bell, Book, and Candle, a film that bewitches with its narrative, is underscored by these captivating facts. From the carefully crafted streets of MGM's Lot 2 to the delightful real-world connection of Puaket and the birthday festivities of James Stewart, these details offer a richer appreciation of the film's history and magic. So next time you indulge in the enchanting tale of Bell, Book, and Candle, remember the hidden layers that make the experience even more enchanting. In an alternate reality of Hollywood's casting carousel, the 1958 classic film Bell Book and Candle could have starred none other than the iconic duo Cary Grant and Grace Kelly, originally penned to be directed by Alexander McKendrick, a fixture of Ealing Studios. The romantic supernatural comedy took a different turn. Interestingly, it was revealed that Cary Grant, renowned for his suave demeanor and charm, actively pursued the lead role. However, fate had a different plan. The role eventually found its way to the talented hands of James Stewart, who shared the screen with the enchanting Kim Novick. Novick, in later interviews, expressed her admiration for Stewart, labeling him as her favorite leading man. She fondly recounted their collaboration, highlighting the chemistry that infused their performances. Novick's disappointment was palpable as she recalled Stewart's declaration that he would no longer take on leading roles. She had hoped their on-screen partnership would continue to flourish. While the casting took unexpected turns, Bell Book and Candle became a memorable piece of cinematic history, weaving its romantic tale of a modern witch spellbinding love. The film's evolution from casting speculations to the final pairing of Stewart and Novick adds an intriguing layer to its legacy. In the world of what-ifs, the enchantment of Bell Book and Candle lives on, reminding us that even in the realm of cinema, fate's casting choices can cast their own spells. James Stewart's unconventional casting in Bell, Book, and Candle, a quirk in cinematic barter in the annals of Hollywood lore, certain cinematic couplings stand out, etching themselves into the celluloid tapestry of time. The 1958 romantic comedy Bell, Book, and Candle occupies one such slot, bearing the intriguing hallmark of a cinematic quid pro quo. While the silver screen had seen its share of unusual pairings, it was the transitory contract game between studios that prompted James Stewart's foray into the whimsical realm of witchcraft. Columbia Pictures, the cinematic behemoth of its day, found itself engaged in a shrewd exchange with Paramount Pictures. The object of the barter was none other than the enigmatic Kim Novick, who had entranced audiences with her dual roles in Hitchcock's haunting Vertigo. 
In return for lending their starlet for the role of the beguiling witch Jillian Holroyd, Columbia secured Stewart's talents for their forthcoming projects. A peculiar deal, indeed, considering Stewart's reputation for roles that exuded an air of rugged earnestness. Amid the backdrop of a Greenwich village adorned with mysticism, Bell, Book, and Candle follows the tale of Jillian, a witch who inadvertently falls for her unsuspecting neighbor, Shepard Henderson. Yet, even as sparks fly on screen, it's intriguing to note that Stuart, the affable Everman, felt an acute disconnect with his character. He confided in friends that he believed himself to be miscast, struggling to bridge the gap between the whimsical world of enchantment and his traditional screen persona. The title itself, Bell, Book, and Candle, is a nod to the arcane rituals of exorcism. Reverberating with esoteric resonance, the ritual's opening incantation of Ring the Bell, Open the Book, Light the Candle offers a glimpse into the bewitching world that unfolds. The film's denouement, much like a mystical circle, concludes with the whispered decree of Ring the Bell, Close the Book, Quench the Candle, leaving its protagonists irrevocably changed. In an era when contractual obligations and studio alliances often sculpted cinematic destinies, Bell, Book, and Candle stands as an exemplar of the serendipitous unions that shaped Hollywood's narrative landscape. Whether it was the curious casting of James Stewart or the ethereal dance of light and shadow, the film's enchantment transcends the realms of both screen and studio. As the luminescent embers of Bell Book and Candle continue to cast their enchanting glow across the tapestry of cinematic history, they beckon us to embark on an introspective journey. This 1958 masterpiece, a symphony of mystique and human connection, is more than just frames on celluloid. It's a portal into our own narratives of fascination and fondness. With each flicker of Kim Novick's beguiling gaze and James Stewart's endearing allure, we're transported to a realm where the magical and the mundane intertwine in an exquisite dance. This is not just a movie, it's a canvas upon which we paint our own experiences, a tapestry woven with threads of nostalgia, fascination, and contemplation. Have you ever found yourself entranced by the ethereal allure of someone, much like Gillian's enchantment over Shep? Or perhaps you've felt the pull of the mystical and intangible force that tugs at your curiosity, akin to the world of witches and warlocks in the heart of New York City. These reflections are the testament to the film's lasting power, a testament that urges us to look inward and discover the echoes of Bell Book and Candle in the tapestries of our own lives. As the credits roll and the spell of the movie lingers, I invite you to share your own kaleidoscope of thoughts and memories that this cinematic gem has ignited within you. How has this film touched your heart? What moments have etched themselves onto your soul? Your reflections are not just whispers into the wind, they are threads that weave us all into a shared narrative of appreciation for the silver screen's magic. Thank you for accompanying me on this journey of enchantment, for delving into the realms of memory and emotion that Bell Book and Candle evoke. Your time and your stories are the enchantments that keep the spirit of this film alive, a beacon for generations to come. Until we gather again to share tales and musings, may the sparks of Bell Book and Candle's charm continue to illuminate our lives, wishing you endless fascination and discovery.